but you know us. We're always on the lookout for new trends and for some of the coolest things I've ever heard of, like Stock X, which is a kind of stock market for things, namely limited edition sneakers, watches, handbags, and streetwear. Stock X got its start as a centralized marketplace for sneakerheads to buy and sell very expensive shoes. And it has been such a hit that it keeps expanding in new categories. You know what? This is a game changer. I keep thinking of when was when, when eBay started, you said, wow, hold it, this is like unbelievable. And then it becomes a billion dollar guy. This is what's going to happen to these guys. That's why I want Josh Luber. He's the co-founder and CEO of StockX to, to find out more about this amazing company. Mr. Luber, welcome to Mad Money. Good to see you. Good to be here. Thank Thanks you. Thank you, Josh. Me. I mean, I got to tell you, I'm a little more excited than usual because I, I, I was having dinner with Mark Benioff. And I, his, his nephew starts, he's doing, he's trading, he's trading. I'm, I'm having dinner, and I, I said, well, stocks? It's 11, it was after work. And he said, no, sneakers. I, I, I said, but that's the silliest thing I ever heard. And he yeah. said, why don't you do some homework? Why don't you look at StockX? You know, what's funny was I happened to be sitting next to Mark at NBA Finals game. And I sat down with him, and at the first TV timeout, his wife leans over to me, and she goes, looks at her phone, she goes, are you the StockX guy? <laughs> And it's right, and, and it was and it was his nephew that had reached out to it. Well, so then yeah, you know that he's yeah. okay. Right. Well, by the way, the, and the flip side, and the, you know, I, I got text from like, oh, you're sitting next to Mark Benioff, and then she got text is sitting next to him. for for 15 year old kids or however old his nephew is. Yes. I mean, this That's is it. this is life. And so that was me when through. I was 15 years walk old. Through because yeah. I think that this is the most amazing thing. And my first reaction was, I, why didn't I do it? And second is, darn it all because of the show. I would like to be you and Dan Gilbert's partner. That's how cool I think this is. Yeah, and the thing is, like, sneakers are massive, and we can talk about, like, the shoes that we have here and, and why this is such a big business, but it is about the model. It is about, we've basically, we've created a stock market for consumer yes. goods, right? So we've basically taken how eBay used to work and said, listen, this is how marketplaces used to function. Well, why does it function like stock markets? And we say that, and people immediately think about investments, and it's not about investments per se, although it, it can, can be. be. It's about the method of connecting buyers and sellers, right? If you think about how a stock market connects buyers and sellers yes. with bids and asks right. you know, around a single asset, that's been the most efficient form of, of price discovery forever, right. right? And so all we're doing is taking it that, pointing it from stocks and bonds and oil and gas to new commodities, right. to sneakers and streetwear and watches and handbags. But what, what defines value? I mean, I have sneakers. They don't, they're worth what I pay for them. What's <laughs> or, worth or, more than or, what I pay for? Or maybe less if you've been wearing them, right? <laughs> right. This is just supply and demand. This is Econ 101. So like, if Nike puts out basic, a limited edition yeah. of 200, 200 pairs of sneakers, the limited edition, because Jordan, okay? Yes. It, it, if I go buy 10 of those and I wait six months, am I going to make money? Maybe, right? Maybe. maybe. Well, you got to ask the demand side of the equation, right? right? right. So what's, what's phenomenal about this, even maybe more so than the actual market in terms of supply and demand, in the actual market, ultimately, the company's performance has a, has a direct impact, right? right on. Right. The, this is just supply and demand, right? right? And so, like, the I chose these it's shoes pure. for a reason. It is it is the purest part, right? Right. Right. This shoe right here, this was Kanye's first shoe with Adidas. This is, it's called the, the um, Adidas Yeezy it's 350. It's like, like the you move can, where I can't yeah, touch yeah, it. No, like, 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 take a hammer to it like Michelangelo <laughs> or something. This was the first shoe that they released with, with Adidas. This is Kanye's first shoe. It's called the Yeezy 350 Turtle Dove, right? We don't know supply. The brands don't tell us supply. Right. But we know it was limited. And because of Kanye, this demand is, was through the roof. It was, all right, so, all right, am I holding like a $200 pair of sneakers? At retail. And now what, what are they what, trading on StockX? About 1200 This. So yes. this is worth 600 no, no, no. Well, 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 you know what I mean. It's a five by two situation. Uh, the, the, we don't do a lot of selling gotcha. individual shoes. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And by the way, <laughs> this is the least expensive of all the shoes we oh, have up come here. On. But this is a $1,200 pair, right? But right? maybe these are tulips. The, they're not tulips. All right, tell me why they're not tulips. Transparency. Tulips, baseball cards, beanie babies, right? Baseball cards. Everybody thought they were the only one that had 1289 upper deck Ken Griffey Juniors. But we all had 1289 upper decks. I know, decks, they printed right? too many of them. They printed too many. And there was no transparency to know what was out there, right? And first of all, that was before the internet, right? This is, when you have transparency into a market, then you could have true supply and demand and not worry about a, a bubble and, and burst but and tulips and baseball cards. But Nike floods the zone and don't, don't that's tell fair. you. That's fair. So that, that's how... You could crash the market, Nike or Adidas could crash the market if they made every shoe available in infinite supply. But they would <laughs> but have Josh, all sorts they, of other they issues. They know all about you and they won't of do course. that. Of course this they won't. This is key for them, of, isn't it? it this Mark is marketing. Mark knows where things are trading. It's CEO. A thousand percent. A thousand percent. It, this is marketing for them. This is great, right? This shoe in the end, this is a shoe, this is a collaboration. This is an Air Jordan 1, but it's a collaboration with Virgil Abloh, 
who's done a bunch of collaborations, who's a designer from Off-White and now also designs for Louis Vuitton. And so this shoe, which retailed for about $200, now resells for about $1,500. I'm afraid to even touch him. I mean, like, what if I scuff him? We're gonna work our way up in value, right? But uh, you know, I'm being told, you know, I have yeah. to tell you something about TV. There's my friend Kareem, and he's waving me and telling me that this interview is over, and, I, and I'm not ending it. I'm not ending it because I'm having too good a time. We, we got a Just lot more shoes to get Just how you got the mm. idea, all right, and where you see this thing going, and then yeah. Kareem, yeah, it's okay. Cause this yeah. is too much fun. <laughs> I get two more minutes, I just got two more minutes. Value. Right. I think, well, this minute. is this is this is this whole thing is about price discovery, about true market value. Okay. Before this, I had a price guide for sneakers. We were scraping eBay to create the Kelly Blue Book for sneakers. Cool. That's the start of all of this. Is what is a, a sneaker actually worth? If you understand the value of one pair of sneakers, you could create sneaker portfolios. You could look at your whole sneaker collection like a stock portfolio. And then it's just one step to say an actual stock market for sneakers. Right. That's but, how this thing okay, started. Okay, but how about the greatest of all time? How about your opponent, Goat, just got 100 million from Foot Locker? Mm -hmm. Powerful. Yeah, but you know what? What that shows is that the retail sector and the resale sector are converging. It's gonna be one market. Who are the people? Yeah. Is they young? Are they old? I mean, I turned it's out that my, half my staff is doing this thing. Yeah, yeah. When I thought they were working with me. It, <laughs> right? I thought, it, they, I thought they were doing this show, but they were trading sneakers. Yeah, it's, a, it's about access. Maybe you don't wanna pay $1,500, but maybe you just want a pair of shoes different than what's at Foot Locker today. There's 300 pairs of shoes on the wall at Foot Locker. There's 35,000 on StockX. I wish that I could do a special just on this. This is brilliant. That's Josh Luber, CEO of StockX. I have tremendous, tremendous respect for what this man has done. Mad Money's back at you. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.